Hi there folks, Luke McDonald here with what is my final reflection in my Research into Practice Teacher Education course. Um, I've chosen the form of a video essay to catalog my final thoughts and reflections on this course as a whole and answer some of the three guiding questions that this assignment uh, has ascribed to us. And the structure for this video essay will be firstly discussing my research question and uh, what kind of lens that I approach this six week teaching block with and why I had chosen that specific lens as a means to improve my practice. Secondly, I'm going to be commenting on how daily and weekly reflections uh, and research into this teaching problem has helped me understand and better implement my own teaching practice. Thirdly, I will be reflecting and discussing on what new and surprising things I learn about myself and my teaching before concluding on how I feel that I can incorporate reflexive and reflective teaching into my lifelong pedagogy. So I'll begin by uh, re-examining my research question, which I'll have stated here. Um, my research question had to deal with the successful implementation of a CRP, or culturally relevant and responsive pedagogy. And my research question uh, essentially asked me, uh, how might I better synthesize student inquiry and course content within my pedagogy to ensure my teaching practices are embodying the high expectations, reflective teaching, and student-centered approaches that culturally relevant pedagogy endorses? Um, you know, for me, going into this teaching placement, I knew I needed to keep the student experience at the heart of my teaching, and I think that that's what CRP is all about. Um, additionally, I really took on this endeavor uh, because I felt that it was you know, earnestly something that I struggled with. I felt that sometimes CRP appeared as uh, too grandiose an idea to successfully and realistically implement. Uh, I, at the beginning of this, you know, teaching journey, I felt that it would be too difficult to meaningfully incorporate each of my students, you know, 70 plus students, um, meaningfully into my lesson planning. I thought, you know, especially at the school I was at in Brampton, that my the ethnicities that were in my classrooms were too diverse. Uh, and, you know, I felt that just the logistics of trying to uh, blend Guyanese culture with Shakespeare or uh, Sri Lankan culture with uh, Mary Shelley's Frankenstein and then incorporate um, Scottish, Irish, Vietnamese, uh, Nigerian, uh, Indian, you know, I was making my head spin. And so that's really why I wanted to delve into CRP and, you know, Frame my reflections through it. So how was I successfully implementing it? Was I tokenizing students? And what could I have done better? Uh, this brings me to the first section of my video essay, which is a discussion on my daily and weekly reflections, in addition to the research that I took, uh, took on during my te uh, six-week teaching placement, and how this helped me understand my practice better. So um, one of the first things that I used in terms of utilizing reflection was just initial discussions with my MT and discussing um, his experience with CRP and how that he and how um, he would successfully integrate student experience into his lesson planning and how he felt it affects their learning. Um, the great thing and the fortunate thing I may add is that my MT was uh, very responsive uh, to me and in, in this endeavor. Uh, he was always a breadth of information that I could rely on and someone to talk to and kind of bolster my reflections because uh, while individual reflections are certainly paramount in improving your teaching practice, uh, discussing your professional progress and, you know, your semester-long goals with colleagues is another good way to hold yourself accountable, keep track of your progress, and introduce another perspective onto your teaching, uh, which I earnestly feel can only make you more well-rounded and uh, versatile as a teacher. So, one of our topics was uh, supporting our English language learners. and you know, integrating uh, recent immigrants, uh, how are we going to make them feel safe, uh, welcome, and engaged, uh, as in safe, welcome, and engaged member uh, of our classroom community. So I had two students uh, specifically, uh, one um, gentleman who had recently immigrated from India, and uh, one young lady who had came from Nigeria not just two months before I began teaching her. And in my experience, um, you know, having to make sure, or how should I phrase this, not having to make sure, uh, ensuring that those students always felt welcome, always uh, were engaging with the metaphors and the examples and the processes that we were talking about in class 
uh, was extremely important for me. Uh, it was the last thing I wanted to, you know, make that transition into a new country and a new setting all the more difficult for a student. So uh, reflecting on their experience with my MT uh, and how I can challenge them uh, to engage in the class was certainly lots of conversations I had. And uh, one way that I tried to do that was with uh, group work and specifically group work that was uh, assigned in the terms that I created the seminar pairs or I created the groupings rather than let students choose themselves because uh, that way that you know these immigrant students who are just coming here um, still just trying to make friends uh, didn't have to go through that uh, additional burden of negotiating through those uh, social situations of trying to integrate themselves into friend circles or groups that are already pre-established from grades prior uh, as they were in grade 11. So this was big for me and I think this did a wonders in terms of helping the students um, you know truly feel welcome and respond to their cultural need of you know just obviously entering into Canada. Um, you know daily conversations with students or definitely my next strategy after these initial reflections. I feel that asking each and every student when they come into the classroom, how are you? What did you get up to yesterday? Uh, gives them that <clears throat> ever important insight and a glean of insight into their life. Uh, for example, I found out you know, what video games my students like to play, which of them are athletes, which of them are dancers, which of them are artists, um, what are their dreams, what are their aspirations, where do they live, what's their home life like? What are their other classes, for instance? These are all meaningful parts of that student experience. And one that, uh, and I would say that once you understand each student's, or at least begin to understand each student's experience, their trust in you opens up immensely. And that is where CRP, uh, you know, truly, truly uh, begins to become manifest, I feel. Um, and, you know, one of the research uh, articles that I read, that's just good teaching by uh, Lads at Billings. Gloria Ladson Billings uh, kind of really redefined that for me. You know, it took culturally relevant pedagogy from something that was, you know, seemingly near impossible to implement in terms of, you know, integrating each person's culture into the course content or lesson planning and transferred my understanding of CRP into a practice that uh, creates high expectations for students, makes them feel welcome, and does not uh, deny the difference and the diversity of their experience. So, in that regard, you know, I did not have to uh, talk about Nigeria specifically when I was talking about Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. What I did have to keep in mind, though, in my teaching was that my student, who was a recent immigrant from Nigeria, was in the classroom and that the expectations in terms of, you know, how students would be interacting or how they would be engaging in class would have to be tempered uh, and be given perhaps extra care in those circumstances. Um, finally, um, in terms of reflecting, uh, extended reflections at the end of various learning assignments or learning cycles allow you to reflect on your student-centered approaches and truly assess who you're teaching with your teaching practice. So, um, you know, reflecting on, okay, how did this student do in this group work assignment? Or are they working well individually? You know, how can I temper um, my lessons and my differentiation in order to help all students succeed? So, you know, when you have a, a lump sum of data, such as summative marks, and uh, lots of formative feedback, you can read and comb through that data to decipher how those students are going to be better supported during the next learning cycle. So that's uh, what I would say in terms of my reflection. Initial, obviously, reflections to set the course of the unit, continue daily conversations to reinforce uh, relationships of trust, care, and respect, and implement CRP, and then extended uh, reflections at the end of learning cycles to help uh, better prepare you for the next one and support the students who are uh, in need of that extra support. So now I'd like to move on uh, to what surprising or new things I learned about myself during teaching. Um, one negative quality that I picked up on very early was that I had a poor tendency for documentation. And what, am I, what I mean by this is um, I learn a bunch of amazing things about my students and you know it may be fresh in my mind for three or four days, but come four weeks down the road, some of it falls out of my head. Uh, for example, I had assigned them an I am poem where they're able to write uh, a letter to me as the teacher or a poem or rather and describe their hopes, dreams, fears, ambitions, uh, goals for the course and such forth. And I learned so much about my students from this assignment. Uh, however, I made the rookie mistake of you know not recording uh, some of these or at least taking pictures of them uh, for my records 
before marking them and handing them back. Um, so the problem with that is I didn't keep the documentation and uh, some students who are you know um, less of a presence in class, some of my more quiet and shy students, uh, what I learned about them unfortunately slipped through the cracks and I found myself uh, kind of fumbling when it came to reflecting on what I did know about those individual students. So I really wish I would have kept more documentation, uh, specifically some of my formative feedback and my I am poems, and I kept those for my own review so I could reflect upon them and reinforce what I've already known about the students rather than have it lost to, uh, lost to memory. Uh, once again, um, I learned personally how I want to implement CRP um, and it's definitely in line with Ladson Billings approach of uh, conceptualizing high student expectations, uh, student-centered approaches and um, uh, an, uh, an acceptance and you know true understanding of student experience rather than trying to tokenize students by character or caricaturizing their culture in my lesson planning. So I really wanted it to be a more so relationship based in the sense that the students knew that I understood their struggles and where they're coming from and in that sense could support them at each and every learning endeavor. Um, one thing I learned thankfully about um, my teaching practice towards the end of this six week block is that uh, you know I actually implement CRP very well and how I know this is you know during my last couple days many of my students had wrote me letters uh, expressing their appreciation for my sincere attempts to get to know them uh, to ensure that they're always included in classroom activities that they're always fully engaged and pushing their limits uh, they thank me for having high expectations but also having the care and sincerity to give them meaningful and constructive feedback and also understanding uh, their experience so that I could give those accommodations when necessary and you know that was obviously very heartwarming and moving for me especially to set out uh, my goal at the beginning of this teaching block was to better utilize and better implement my culturally relevant and responsive pedagogy and to have my students recognize uh, my progress uh, in the same sense that I recognized theirs was humbling uh, but also gratifying and I learned that um, CRP is much easier than I thought to implement you know it really just comes down to earnestly caring listening and remembering uh, what your students tell you uh, so you can better address them as the individual learners and people that they are. So finally, I want to conclude um, this video essay on the topic of how I may incorporate reflexive practice or reflective teaching practices into my lifelong pedagogy and a teaching profession. So I broke this up into three sections. The first would be daily micro adjustments. Um, having the privilege of teaching the same course back to back as I did, I taught grade 11 academic English in period one and period two. Um, even taking that five minutes between classes to reflect or uh, between preps can make huge, huge benefits for the students. It uh, allows you to make those necessary changes to make the lesson that much better or maybe salvage a potentially disastrous outcome. I can't tell you how many times I was able to do this in my uh, teaching block and making those daily micro adjustments based on reflections uh, lead to uh, incremental but significant changes in your lesson planning that can have an extremely positive effect on students. Uh, week by week differentiation, you know, analyzing your weekly learning activities and commenting who is who you have reached and engaged should always be considered in your preparation and uh, your modification of lesson plannings. You know, using reflection in this way supports the implementation of culture relevant pedagogy as well as differentiated instruction, and it also holds you accountable as a teacher for uh, following those mandates and you know truly uh, differentiating and improving your teaching practice. Finally is my realization that I am a lifelong learner uh, and when I reflect each and every day, each and every week, and each and every month on my teaching practice, I'm able to contextualize my triumphs, my hardships, and my opportunities of growth, uh, which certainly make me a better teacher in the long run. You know, we hear all the time that uh, the journey of a learner or your education is never done and I would say neither is your teacher training or development. We have to continually uh, strive to increase and better implement our practice each day so we're better serving the students of tomorrow and the ones in front of us in the classroom today. This concludes my video essay uh, folks. Thank you very much for watching and listening. I sincerely wish you the best in the future. Cheers and have a great one folks. Bye bye now.